Hey, welcome to this video. This video is gonna be about me trying to find my aerobic threshold. It's harder to find than I thought it would be. I'm gonna be using an indoor test on a treadmill. This test is outlined on the Uphill Athletes website. Uh, there's an excellent video there about how to conduct this test. The link in the description below, and I will be briefly describing it as I go through the process of doing the test. So join me as I struggle to find my aerobic threshold and push the limits of what I thought I could do while singing. Okay, so I'm here on the treadmill. Treadmill. And I'm just about to start the heart rate drift test, the indoor version. Uh, I've got my heart rate chest strap on. I might lose the shirt depending on how I feel temperature wise in here. Um, so I'm currently semi fasted. I've had one, about 300 milliliters of orange juice and a small piece of cheese. You're supposed to run this test at the same state uh, as you would for the bulk of your training, which for me, I usually eat about an hour and a half before I run. So um, we'll see how it goes. Um, this might not be the final test. I might have to do a few rounds of this to actually pinpoint my aerobic threshold. But um, we're going to start with a 15 minute warm up, uh, starting from walking and slowly increasing to a heart rate that I think is my aerobic threshold. And we'll see how that goes. Um, I'll run for one hour at those treadmill settings um, and we'll track my heart rate at the 30 minute mark I'm gonna hit the lap button on my watch so I'm gonna have an initial lap that's the first half of the run after I've warmed up and a second lap of the run that is the second half of the run and we will be able to very clearly and very quickly see the average heart rates if we see more than a 5% increase we know that I'm running above my aerobic threshold and that my threshold heart rate is actually lower Okay, a little bit of an update. I am 10 minutes in to the first interval, and uh, my target heart rate was 148, so I got it there at the beginning of the interval, and it's since dropped to, I was dropping down into like 135. I don't know if I wasn't fully warmed up enough, I warmed up for 16 minutes. I'm going to complete the test at the current settings. I thought about starting a new interval and increasing the settings, starting the test over basically, but in the state of completeness, I'll finish this test and then I'll have to do another one at a higher pace or incline or whatever. I was singing a minute ago, so clearly it's not taxing my cardiovascular system enough, but we'll finish it off and see how it goes. Okay, I have all the data. That uh, was very easy, probably too easy. Uh, the only thing I think I'm gonna learn from this little outing is that if I do a sustained high note, and I hold it for more than about eight seconds, my heart rate will shoot up by about 10 beats per minute. So, yeah, that was I think the only thing I'm gonna learn from this, that I can still sing and run at 10 kilometers an hour with an incline of four. That's gonna be my only takeaway. I might have been out of tune, but I can still sing. So I'm just doing my cool down right now. I dropped the incline flat. Yeah, that was really easy. We'll have a look at the data and probably have to do this again soon. Okay, let's pull up the data. Don't mind that beautiful photo of Mount Edith Caval. That's not foreshadowing anything to come. All right, so here's the data from my first drift test. We'll scroll down, have a look at the lap data. And here we can see the first interval where my heart rate was 143, my average heart rate over the half hour interval. And on the second interval, my average heart rate was also 143. So we subtract the two and divide it by the initial and we found out that my heart rate drift was zero. So since the drift is less than 5%, I ran this test at a heart rate that is below my aerobic threshold. So we'll come back, we'll increase either the pace or the incline and run the test again. Hopefully we'll see close to 5% drift and that will indicate that the average heart rate during the first interval is my aerobic threshold. Okay, so it is the following day uh, and I am on the treadmill. treadmill. Again, I am going to be doing the same test 
Uh, so I'm going to probably increase the incline and the speed slightly. I'll increase this incline by 1% and I might increase the speed by, I don't know, half a kilometer an hour. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And hopefully I will get better results. Uh, I mean, I got good results last time. I found out that I was below my aerobic threshold, uh, which is a good result, I guess. Okay, so I just finished the second of my drift tests. Um, that also felt good. It was definitely harder. So I did 500 meters of vert in an hour. Um, and we'll have to take a closer look at the data, but I think that's still not my, I, I think I'm still below my aerobic threshold. Um, it felt, it felt, it was definitely harder. I didn't sing that much this time. So we'll have a look at the data and we'll see if I have to do this again. And I think I'm gonna to have to do this again. But that's a good thing. It means that all my base training has paid off. Okay, so here is the data from my second heart rate drift test. Again, we scroll down, open up the lap data, have a look at the first half an hour interval. We see that my average heart rate was 152. And then we have a look at the second interval, second half hour, and we see that it was also 152. So again, I had 0% drift, indicating that I am below my aerobic threshold, and I will have to redo the test at a higher intensity. Okay, so it's the end of another work day. I take off my work hat and I go to run. That's the routine, that's what I do just about every day. So I will be conducting the third of my drift tests um, exactly the same as before, except this time I will be increasing the settings once again to try to find that 5% drift. 32 degrees today, plus the humidity. It definitely felt like 40. I was in the sun all day um, trimming hedges, but I did a really nice job. Have you ever seen a more perfect hedge? Perhaps this one. So I guess I'll quickly talk about what's different about this test from the other ones. Um, so I work today, so I'm only in 15,000 steps today. I haven't quite had a full meal today, it's just been too hot to eat. I've probably eaten 500 calories today and had about 3 liters of water. I've been up for um, 13 hours now, uh, which for my other tests, the previous two drift tests, I had been up only for an hour prior to starting the test. Um, so this will give probably a better indication of what my aerobic threshold is um, for when I'm doing my after work training, which is when I do the majority of my training. Another quick point I'll make is that I was wearing a new pair of Topo Athletic Ultrafly 2s on my last two runs and it caused a bit of a pressure point that wasn't bothersome during the runs. I definitely noticed it, but um, that has since caused a very small blister, so I'm going to quickly treat that and I'm going to switch to an old pair of Ultrafly 2s uh, that have been better broken in for the longer duration run that I'm about to do of about an hour and 15 minutes. So ends another heart rate drift test. I ended up dropping the speed down slightly back to the speed from my original test, but increasing the incline to 6%. And that put me at a heart rate that was about 160 uh, for the first interval. And I averaged 162 beats per minute during the second interval. If we take the final average heart rate and subtract it from the initial average heart rate, we get two beats per minute. We divide that by the initial, which is 160 beats per minute and we get a 1.25% drift, which miraculously is still less than 5%. And that confirms that my aerobic threshold is still higher than 160 beats per minute. I am absolutely astonished by that result. Um, I thought it was 156 based on how I feel. I can tell when I'm running, that when I pass 156 running outside, um, just something feels different. 
I don't know what it is, but it feels different. I found that the running actually got easier over the course of the hour um, as I fine-tuned my technique a little bit, which I just did 600 meters of gain in an hour, which I'm, I'm fairly happy with, um, with my well still in zone two um, at 10 kilometers an hour. I guess I have to do another one of these drift tests because if I really want to figure out what my aerobic threshold is, I need to get a 5% increase, which that was, that was true. I mean, that wasn't, that was cardiovascular, in terms of cardiovascular, that wasn't strenuous at all. Um, I, I will admit that I didn't think I could sing for the first 45 minutes, but then uh, in the last uh, interval there, I may have sung the first phrase to train you by Nirvana. And I may have also sung a little bit of All Within My Hands by Metallica. Uh, it just kind of happened. I, I don't know what to say. I didn't feel any lactic acid building up in my legs. Obviously not because my heart rate would have drifted if there was lactic acid accumulating. I probably could have held that pace for easily... Well, I mean, technically speaking, I should be able to hold that pace for hours. Um, and maybe... Uh, Psychologically, I don't think that I can do that, but physically, uh, I should be able to do it. And I got to the end, I'm like, oh, it's over. Should I keep going just for the sake of continuing my training? Um, and then I realized that I'd have to recover to do this test again. Probably not tomorrow because um, I do want to let my legs recover a little bit from that. When your zone two pace reaches that certain point where you start having such a high leg turnover that your uh, neurological system starts getting stressed by the running activity even though your cardiovascular system isn't being taxed having the higher leg turnover and thus the faster rate of uh, motor neurons firing can be very stressful on your neurological system and that takes uh, a long time to recover okay it's another day i took a rest day yesterday and i'm back again we're going to do the fourth round of my heart rate drift test and hopefully this time we will find my aerobic threshold. So I expect that I am very close with 160 beats per minute to my aerobic threshold. If I'm increased by about two or three beats per minute, which I think is where um, I'm gonna start reaching that 5% uh, drift. Okay, so I just finished my fourth heart rate drift test. For whatever reason, I couldn't get my heart rate up at the previous settings that I used. So I ended up using an incline of nine on this one and a speed of about 10 and a half kilometers an hour. And that was able to get my heart rate up for the initial 30 minute interval to 163 as an average heart rate over the half hour. And for the second interval, my heart rate shot up to 168 on average, subtracting 168 from 163 and dividing by the initial 163 gives a 3.7% drift over the one hour, which is still less than 5%. So this is still less than my aerobic threshold. But seeing as I've only gone up by three beats per minute between this test and my third heart rate drift test, and there was such an increase in the heart rate drift, I think it's safe to assume that my aerobic threshold is very, very close to 163, might be 165. I felt very good today, uh, very good. Uh, if you include my warm up and everything, I did a vertical kilometer um, and I did about 14 kilometers of horizontal total. Um, so, yeah, so it um, definitely, uh, we're very close. I don't think there's much point um, trying to refine it anymore for the sake of this video. 
for the sake of my own training, you know, the next time I hop on the treadmill, I might go a little bit higher uh, and see if maybe putting the incline at 10 um, and holding that 10 and a half kilometer an hour speed will get me to exactly where uh, my aerobic threshold is. But for now, I think this pretty much sums it up. So now I can take this information and input it into Garmin Connect and upload that to my watch. And my watch will have uh, much better performance tracking now um, and I'll be able to see the different heart rate zones on the watch screen uh, more accurately. I think I've collected, I've collected a lot of data and I learned a lot about um, what, I can, what I can handle um, and still be fairly comfortable. The only thing I experienced on that fourth drift test in terms of discomfort was a little bit of tightness um, in one of my hamstrings and um, it, I had a little bit of a stitch developing uh, cramping during the first uh, little bit, but I was able to work through it with some deep breathing while I was running. Uh, that cleared that and really it wasn't uh, that uncomfortable um, as it should be. I had no lactic acid um, accumulating in my legs that I could feel, uh, so I, I could have kept going. I really enjoyed doing this test. I found out that the top of my zone two was about 20 beats per minute higher than what Garmin seemed to think that it was. Uh, based on what I've been doing. At the same time, it says that my fitness is declining. So it's not a very good tracker of my performance uh, because I'm using a slightly unorthodox method of training where I'm working on my aerobic base more than I am tempo uh, and zone three, which is what most people spend a lot of time doing because I'm trying to maximize my aerobic base and thus maximize my endurance potential. So that wraps this video up. The next video in this series will be about my lactate threshold. Uh, once we have my lactate threshold, we'll have all the information we need to completely set up my heart rate zones. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. You can follow along with the rest of my journey. And if you hit that bell button, you'll get notifications when I upload a new video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.